This is Jeff Mucci with RCR Wireless News, and we're wrapping up day four at Mobile World Congress with Cloudera, mm -hmm. and we have VJ Raja, and he's going to talk about why clients are selecting Cloudera for IoT. Absolutely. So, if you think about IoT, I mean, the focus till now has been on sensorizing and you know getting sensors on the edge, but now clients are starting to realize, hey, there's data that's coming out of sensors every single second. Um, so in a lot of ways, this becomes a big data problem for customers, if you think about it, right? I mean, you have sensors sending out data, temperature, pressure readings, uh, vibrations per second, you know, coming out every single second. And it's not just the volumes of data. So if you think about connected cars, for example, um, a, a self-driving car can generate somewhere like two petabytes of data per year, right? It's just one car. Think about, you know, millions of cars on the roads. You're talking about a huge data problem that organizations are starting to deal with. By the way, it's not just the, the volumes. Think about the variety of data, right? So you have temperature pressure readings on one end. The other end, you have um, things such as video analytics. So people are bringing in video streams, images. We have clients who are bringing in noise levels from machines to analyze it further, right? So, so IoT suddenly becomes a big data problem with huge volumes of data, huge variety of data. And you're talking about data coming in, streaming in in real time, as well as data coming in batches. Right, so you need a platform that can really help you ingest all of the data, uh, process that data, analyze the data, and drive insights in real time. And that's exactly what we provide. We provide the big data platform that organizations are using to basically ingest all of their data coming in from sensors and IoT. Um, they're combining that with other data sources. So for example, let's say if you're a connected car, you want to combine the data coming from cars with weather data. Uh, with, uh, let's say, customer information, right? So you bring in different data sources, you can combine data in our platform, you can analyze this data and drive insights from all of the IoT data that's coming in. Can you give us some specific use cases? Absolutely, so I would say some of the biggest use cases that we're seeing um, are in the industrial side of IoT. Um, so two or three use cases I, I would mention is, one is definitely around predictive maintenance. We're seeing a lot of predictive maintenance type use cases um, that, that are starting to show up um, connected vehicles is a big one. Um, I would say usage-based insurance uh, from data coming in from black boxes from connected cars. Yep. That's also a big one. Um, so I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, we recently um, kind of gave out a press release on, on our customer Navistar. So Navistar is uh, the, one of the biggest truck manufacturers in North America. Um, and what they're doing is they're, they're bringing in data from all of their trucks in real time. They're actually tracking 250,000 trucks in real time. So they're bringing in everything from um, the speed, acceleration, braking, um, uh, you know, the road optimization, oil levels, everything, right? So, and by the way, they're a truck manufacturer, but they're offering this as a service to their fleet owners. So, so the, what the fleet managers can do is they can look at their phone or the tablet and can track their trucks in real time. They can understand uh, which trucks needs maintenance. Uh, it, they can proactively schedule maintenance for some of those trucks, right? So that they've been able to significantly reduce downtime for some of these trucks. Not only that, um, uh, they've been able to reduce maintenance cost by as much as 40%. Mm -hmm. So again, real time value from data coming out of trucks, uh, you know, that, that they're using to reduce downtime and optimize their operations. Um, so that's, that's on the connected vehicle side. Right. Um, another example, uh, on, the, on the industrial side, I would say, one of the largest uh, turbine manufacturers. Uh, so the, the hydroelectric power plant in Niagara is run by them, it runs on their turbines. Okay, so what they're doing is, so typically in IoT we hear about bringing in temperature data, pressure data, you know, these digital data sources, but this example is a little interesting because they're bringing in noise levels from turbines in real time to understand the health of the turbines, how well they're functioning, you know, if there are any wear and tear and you know, if there are any issues with the turbines. So they have noise levels coming out of turbines, they're capturing that and they have a mechanism, they're doing some machine learning on that, that data using Cloudera's platform, right? Um, so they're bringing in all of this data into Cloudera uh, and, and then what they're able to do is they're able to analyze variations, aberrations in the, in the noise levels to detect any issues or wear and tear for these turbines. They're doing that in real time and what they can do is the moment they figure out there's, there's, there's an anomaly in the, in the noise levels, they can actually send an alert directly to an operator. The operator might be sitting maybe hundreds of miles away, 
but uh, they can quickly bring up the recording and see what the issue is and accordingly act on it, right? They can send, send somebody out there. and Because if you think about it, you can't do a visual inspection on some of these machines. They're huge, they're massive. Um, and then the only way to do this is by bringing in yeah. yeah noise levels right and they and if you, if you even shut it down for a few minutes it's going to cost you millions you you're losing millions of dollars in productivity right so so very interesting ways in which customers are using IOD, IOT to drive things such as predictive maintenance or connected vehicles and using all of this data to drive intelligence and analytics uh, from IOT can you talk a little bit about the importance of keeping maybe years of data? Oh, yeah. yeah. And why is that appropriate and applicable for IoT? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so from an IoT perspective, you'll definitely see some use cases which are driven from the edge, which is you know at the device level or even at the gateway level. So for example, sub-millisecond response times, right? Uh, where you require human response times. That Those type of use cases will be driven out of the edge. But we see a all of our customers, what they're doing, there's also, they're also bringing a lot of this data back to the cloud for three reasons. Number one is context. What I mean by context is that, um, if you think about connected cars, for example, right? So it's, it's good to know that your brake, brake pads are thinning out, but what's even more impactful is if, if an auto manufacturer can say, hey, your brake pads are thinning out, but here's a coupon of 20% discount for brake pad replacement, at your nearest body shop where you live. Right. Now that becomes engaging, right? That's what IoT is going to be all about. But that requires bringing in sensor data, combining that with other data sources, right. combining that with customer data, location data, weather data. Right. That's what a lot of our customers are doing. So this requires a centralized processing of data, management of data. Mm -hmm. That's what you need a big data platform for, right? So that's one example is context. So enrich the context of the, uh, the IoT data. That's number one. Number two is uh, comparison. Now, what I mean by comparison is, let's say uh, you're bringing data from connected cars. You want to know how did this car perform over the last six months, over the last year? How has the performance gone, right? Uh, or you want to see how did this one car perform versus some of the others? How did this one model perform versus other models? So a lot of our customers, they're bringing in data to do this type of time series analysis, historical analysis, or comparative analysis, so that they can understand how uh, their products or their, their systems are performing. Uh, so, so one is context, number two is comparison. Number three I would say is machine learning. Right. So because to do machine learning you need massive amounts of data. Across diverse situations, diverse scenarios, diverse use cases, um, what if the humidity is higher? What if you know, the road conditions are bad? So you need to bring in a lot of data to do machine learning, right? And that's exactly what our customers are doing. They're bringing in all of this data from sensors and, and from IoT into the cloud, into, into, into Cloudera, to actually do machine learning. They're, they're using um, a systems such as Spark within the Cloudera platform to do machine learning on all of this data. So that requires a lot of data. You need to build these models, you need to test these models, you need to refine these models continuously because you need to keep the, the machines learning, right? Um, but sometimes when you build this machine models, you can then push those machine lear learning models back to the edge as well. But a lot of that machine learning activity will still happen in the cloud. So if you ask me why customers are bringing data to the cloud, these massive workloads, context, comparison, machine learning. How does um, Cloudera help enterprise and industrial customers with security? Absolutely, so, so you should think of security from two perspectives, one is, securing your data in the platform or in the cloud. You know, that's where our, our Enterprise Data Hub platform comes into picture. We have an entire module of security tools that customers utilize to secure their data once the data is in the platform. So we have Cloudera Navigator that they can use to encrypt all data. It's not, it, we are encrypting raw data, metadata, metadata off metadata, right? All of the data gets encrypted. Uh, you have authentication, authorization, all of those tools to manage your data once that data is in the platform. That's one aspect of it. But think about the other security aspect, which is how do you secure the edges, or how do you secure the network, right? That's where a lot of our customers are using um, Hadoop or Cloudera as a platform to manage cybersecurity. Because if you think about it, um, managing cybersecurity requires looking at huge, massive amounts of NetFlow data, right? You just can't m look at that type of data and do machine learning on that data on a, on a on a regular conventional platform. Mm -hmm. You need a big data uh, you know, platform where you can 
bring in this massive amounts of net flow data, identify uh, variations, aberrations in that data, look for uh, you know, anomalous behavior to identify threads. You know, it's like identifying a needle in a haystack, right? So one of the customers, for example, they're bringing in one million events per second of net flow data to do identify anomalous behavior. You just can't scale, achieve that level of scale in conventional platforms, right? So this is why cybersecurity is a big data problem. It is a Hadoopable problem, and this is why a lot of our customers are actually bringing in data you know, from IoT, from endpoints, from the networks, to actually do cybersecurity and analytics on all of this data. Vijay, thanks for your time. Thank you, Jeff, appreciate it.